Hello everyone, and welcome to your 43rd Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can implement our own singletons in Objective-C. Now, you've probably seen singletons before. Maybe you weren't really aware that you were using them necessarily. But I'm just going to run through a few examples of some right now. So NS user default, you've probably seen in both Cocoa and iOS. And basically, they're uh, the, you know the preferences that you might want to keep around in your application. But the really important part here is this standard user defaults method, which actually returns the same object every time you call it. So unlike when we do alloc init or something like that with a string, or even if we use you know string with format, for example, you're always creating a new NS string instance. We're not getting the same guy over and over again. So what a singleton does is it actually creates the same object. And to verify that, you can actually just check it by printing it out. So if I print out this guy here, and I print him out again, you'll notice that they actually have the exact same address because, again, they are the same object. So that's what a singleton is. It's basically where we create one object and we always reference the same guy. You can think of it sort of as a global object that you are always maybe wanting to access in different places. Another one is NS file manager, uh, and this one has the default manager. You can also allocate new file managers. Uh, the reason mostly for NS file manager is that uh, you don't usually need to create multiple file managers. It's a little heavier duty of an object, and so to uh, really just manage it, you can usually just use the same file manager over and over again. So it's usually not necessary to allocate new ones. Um, another probably good example, or probably the best example we have of a singleton, is the NS Notification Center, where anyone can post a notification to the Notification Center, and then anybody can observe those notifications. And this is probably, you know, as close as you're going to get to when you'd want to use a singleton. Uh, it's, you know, anybody might want to post there. Anybody might want to uh, get a notification from it. And by might, I mean that, uh, you know, you want to give the ability for anyone to actually access it. You don't want it to be uh, difficult to actually post to the notification center, and you want it to be easy to get notifications wherever you might be. Uh, it, you know, if a window is going to close, anybody might want to know about that. And so having a single notification center is a good way to do that. So the singleton approach for NS Notification Center, I think is a good one. So with that said, uh, there are, you know, singletons are good and they're kind of, uh, they're very easy to use. However, people can get carried away if they try to make them. Uh, some people like to just be able to access different information anywhere they are in their applications, and this is all right. However, you'll notice that if you start using both NS user defaults and NS notification center, uh, you'll notice that sometimes you can get a little carried away with how much actually goes into these. And when you're accessing global things or you can change global things from anywhere, right? then it's very difficult to debug if something goes wrong. If I can post a notification from anywhere in my application, I gotta track down if, you know, if I don't know why this notification is being posted, I've gotta track down every file that might pretty much post this notification. And if somebody's behaving to this notification, I gotta figure out where that's happening. So having global access to something uh, can be, you know, it's, nice in the beginning, but again, it can get a little hectic if uh, you've got a lot of files that are accessing these things. Now, I think it's a good approach for those examples, but uh, again, in certain cases it works, but oftentimes you really don't need to make a singleton. But anyway, with that being you know said, use them at your own discretion, and I'll show you how to make them. Alright, so let's go ahead and make our own file manager class just subclassing from NS object. And what file manager is going to do is it's going to have a single method and it's going to be a class method. And we indicate that by using the plus sign. Now this is different from the minus sign that you usually see because the minus sign is an instance method. 
So a very simple example of where uh, you'll see this is if I made a new NS string object, for example, and I say NS string alloc init. And init is using it on an object, right? You'll notice that it has the minus sign out front. So it's actually using it on an instance. If I was to use this somewhere else and I said string by appending string, for example, this is also going to use the minus sign because it is using it on an already created object, right? Now you'll notice, however, that alloc is different. It has a plus sign. And the reason for this is because it's interfacing with a class. Anything, any method that is being called directly on a class name is already, it is a class method by definition. If you are creating an object, which is what alloc does, then you are actually going to use the instance methods, which are indicated by the minus sign. So it's very simple. Anytime you're using a method with a class directly, use a plus sign. Anytime you're using an object, then you use a minus sign. Anyway. So yeah, class, plus sign, object, minus sign. Going back to our file manager here. Uh, actually, let me just clear that line of code that I had. Going back to the file manager, what we're returning here is a new file manager object, and we'll just call this the default manager. All right, so the default manager, pretty self-explanatory. We'll return the default manager. All right, so how can we do this? Well, I'm going to show you two different ways that are often used to create singletons. The first way is to use the initialize method. And this is actually a pretty neat way to do it. So when you think about a singleton, there's a few things you have to be careful with. You have to be guaranteed that you're only going to make one of them, right? So you need to make sure that you're going to create a single instance of this thing. You also have to be aware that uh, it's only going to be called once, so that's another important thing. And you also have to be careful with threads. So if uh, if you're going to be using threads and you could potentially call this at the same time, then you could potentially create two objects at the same time. If you don't really know much about threads or concurrency, I suggest checking out the uh, Coco, Concur Coco concurrency tutorials that I have going on right now. All right, anyway, with that said, why would I want to use initialize? Well, initialize comes from NSObject, and it's got some pretty neat properties about it. It's only called once. It's called before anything else, which is also quite important. So uh, it's going to be called before anything else ever happens. So as soon as I say NS string alloc init, uh, basically initialize will be called before any of that ever happens. So initialize is the first method that ever gets called on a class. So it's first. It's only going to be called once. So initialize is only ever called once by the operating system on those specific um, classes. So if I say and a string allocate it 50 times, initialize will only be called first in the beginning, once. That's it. It's also thread safe, which is also pretty cool. It's uh, if I called, if I created NS strings on two separate threads and they both call initialize, there's actually only ever going to be one call to initialize. So initialize is only ever called once, which is another neat thing about it. So it's perfect for using as a, uh, to create a singleton. All right, so how do we actually make storage though for this object? Because, you know, I can initialize uh, an object once, but how do I actually put it into something? Because usually we use properties. But properties only work if you have an object. And we don't have an object. We only have a class. We, we are making our, our own object. And we're not interfacing with the object. So we don't have properties to work with. So if you want to make your own storage in a class, you can use the static keyword. And static allows you to essentially say that you're going to have storage in a class uh, for this object. And yeah. So what we're going to do is we'll say file manager and we'll make the default manager. All right. So there we go. We have static uh, file manager. It means we can access this guy uh, anywhere in this file and uh, it will have storage. So that's what we want. All right. Uh, now, the other thing that we want to do to initialize is basically set it up. So we can say default manager, file manager, alloc, init. Now, this looks pretty good, and we could pretty much leave it here. However, there are a few edge cases that uh, we'd want to be careful about. 
So in theory, multiple people, you know, you can still call initialize more than once. You know, even though the operating system will only call it once for you, usually you never call initialize, but you can still call it even though, you know, you don't have to. So in that case, you might want to be careful about that and actually want to uh, safeguard against that. Also, if there was a subclass that, uh, you know, subclass file manager, and then it called initialize or did anything with that, that's also another protection that you might want to have uh, for the file manager. All right, so to protect against this, we can use a static bool. And we can just say is initialized, gets no. So I'll just kind of write this out, and then I'll explain what I'm doing when I've got it all summed up here. So copy, paste, and the last thing that we need to do is change it to be now initialized. All right, so what does this mean? Well. The static keyword in this case means that it will always keep its state. So there's kind of two meanings of static, really. Static can mean that it's accessible across this file. So anywhere in file manager, uh, .m basically will be able to access default manager. It also means though that inside this method, so if I'm making a static bool inside of initialize, it means that it will keep the storage of what it had before. Unlike a local variable where it's uh, you know, if I if I declared an int in here and then I called initialize again, then the int's gone, right? There's no, it'll be reinitialized to whatever I said it was. So if I said int uh, num gets five, right? And then I call initialize again, it's going to be five again. Static is a little bit different because it's going to keep the state of what it had. So if we, you know, let's say we call initialize or the operating system calls initialize once on this uh, guy here, and then we go into this, obviously, the first, the beginning, right, this is initialized to no. So is this not initialized? Of course it's not initialized yet, so we go into the if statement, and then we set is initialized to yes. So once that's set, is initialized will still keep this value of yes. So if we call the initialize again, it's not going to be reinitialized to no. It's still going to have the old value of yes. So that's sort of what static does inside of a method. It keeps the state that it had before. All right, so that's going to protect against anybody else calling initialize ever on us. All right, so that's, that's that. And uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, that's a pretty simple way to make a, uh, you know, uh, whatever, uh, stat static, what am I trying to say? Hey, geez, I, what, am, what is this turn on again? Yes, uh, singletons. Okay, now how we actually get this object out uh, to the public, which is what we want to be able to do, is we just return that object that we just stored. So we just say return default manager. And against this, again, this is accessible throughout all this file, so we can do that. All right, so if I tested this out, I'll uh, import my file manager dot h and let's just do log so we're doing an ns log and we're just going to make the file manager we'll call default manager twice on it and then we can test this out and you'll see that yay we get the same object and so that's what we wanted right we want a singleton so we want the same object to be created multiple times perfect now again this doesn't protect against somebody calling alloc init on the file manager, they could still make separate instances of this. So uh, in this tutorial, I'm not protecting against that. But in some cases, you know, you might want to allow people to make um, multiple things. And with the file manager, that's kind of the case anyway. All right, so let's just comment that out for now. And uh, let's do the second way that uh, a lot of people will show you how to do some singletons, which is directly in the default manager itself. So a neat way to do this is actually to use GCD. And if you don't know, GCD stands for Grand Central Dispatch, and there's a lot of neat little uh, functions that you can use in there to accomplish what we want to do. So to first start this, we're pretty much doing the same thing that we did before. We're creating a static file manager. Again, this means that it will keep the state. So uh, we'll be, you know, if we initialize the default manager somewhere in this function, or this method rather, then uh, you know it'll still keep the whatever it was initialized to 
on the second time it's called. Uh, the other thing that we want to do here is start our little dispatch thing. So I'm just going to kind of write this out and then you can see uh, what we do. Now, uh, yeah, so what we want to do here is we want to make a dispatch once type and we call this the once token. And uh, this is actually just kind of what Apple's source code will show you. And all this really is, is you can really just think of this as a number. There's really nothing special about this type. It's just sort of uh, this value that we're going to keep around because it's static. So whatever this is set to, it will keep its state if we change it. So don't worry much about it. Just know that it's of dispatch once t. That's the type that we're using. All right, and now we just use this handy dandy dispatch once function right here, and it takes two parameters. The first one is a pointer to dispatch once t type. So we have to take in the address of the once token because it's simply a type it's not actually an object or anything so since it's not a pointer we need to get the address of that object and then we just want to do some code so you might be wondering what does this dispatch once thing actually do well uh, to answer that question it simply does something once so it'll only ever call this once and this is thread safe so if multiple threads tried to call default manager at once they, uh, w this is going to protect against actually having uh, this called multiple times. Again, if you don't know what that even means, feel free to follow my Coco concurrency tutorials. Uh, even if you are on iOS, they're kind of for both macOS and iOS people. All right, so this is where we're just going to set up our default manager, and now we can return the default manager. So there we go. We initialize the default manager once, and it'll only ever be called once. So this code between this block will never be called after it's called the first time through. And then after that, we are just returning whatever default manager is. So there you go. And that's another approach to creating the singleton. And if I was to call this, you'll notice that, again, we get the exact same object in both cases, which is what we want. Perfect. So another neat thing that I'll just show you quickly is that this is actually a code snippet, this little thing that I end up typing out, but I figured I'd just type it out for you to uh, show you. Uh, if you look at dispatch once snippet, you'll see that that's an option. And if you hit return on that, it'll actually expand out to what I just typed. So then you can just do you know, default manager gets file manager alloc in it. All right, so there you go. Those are two different approaches that you can take to creating your own simpletons, or singletons, my goodness, simpletons, singletons, I'm losing my mind. But yep, that's how you can create singletons in Objective-C. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. There's a lot of other things that you usually want to deal with uh, if you want to make purely one singleton and never allow people to uh, create uh, instances, like if you don't want them to alloc in it, you could simply make alloc return the default manager, for example. So there's a lot of different things that you can end up doing in these cases, uh, but anyway, in th this is just short showing you how uh, to work with this. Um, yeah, another case that you might run into is if you go to subclass, if you went to subclass the file manager, as we've set it up right now, uh, you can't really subclass this method unless you rewrite it entirely. So even if you subclassed, you'd still be returning an instance of a file manager because that's what we explicitly said. If you wanted to allow it to return an instance of something else, then you could put in instance type here, for example, if you really wanted to subclass that. But again, these are all sort of decisions that you might make if you were making your own singleton. All right, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, leave your questions in the comments below. See you next time.